Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a difficult but famous rotational static equilibrium problem. So without further ado, let's just look at the problem. This is the problem where, let's say you have two scales, like bathroom scales, and they are balancing a large log or a large beam or some kind of object like this. I'm going to say this beam has a length of eight meters and it has a mass of 50 kilograms and I'm going to put a second mass right here this is only a distance of two meters away from the end and it has a mass of 11 kilograms and my question is going to be what is the reading on each scale so in other words if I picture this problem as having to normal forces like NL and NR is what I'll call them. That is what I'm solving for. I'm solving for the left normal force and I'm solving for the right normal force. This is gonna be the reading on each scale. Now, by the way, maybe you don't know how to solve rotational static equilibrium problems. Maybe you don't even know what they are. But I'll tell you, the first step to solving them is you need to draw a free body diagram. I already have two forces covered. I've got the left normal force and I've got the right normal force. And then I have two more forces to worry about. Obviously one is this mg force of gravity from the 11 kilograms. And then the second one is gonna be from the 50 kilogram mass, the beam itself. Now often my students don't know where that force should go. Like for instance, should the beam force be here? Should it be in the middle? Or should it be on the right side? And the correct answer is it needs to go in the middle because that's where the average of all the weight is going, it's going in the middle. So I'm gonna write mg for the 50 kilograms in the very center, which by the way, is four meters from each end point. And the reason I know that is because the whole thing is eight meters long. It means it gets cut in half, four on the right side, four on the left side, very important. Now the next thing I need to do is, I need to say torques going clockwise are equal to the torques going counterclockwise. This is the secret equation to rotational static equilibrium. All those three words mean is we have an object that's not rotating and it's not moving. And whenever you have that, it's not rotating, it's perfectly balanced. It means I get to use this equation right here. But in order to use this equation, I need to have a pivot point picked out. Normally the pivot point is obvious, but for problems like this, the problem is that I have two pivot points. I have the left pivot point and I have the right pivot point. I cannot have two pivot points. I need to choose one. It doesn't matter which one you choose. I will choose the left end as my pivot point. Again, it's arbitrary. You could have chosen the right. It doesn't matter. And the reason why the pivot point is so crucial is because wherever you choose the pivot point, that force and that torque is going to go away. What do I mean by that? Well, remember, torque is equal to force times distance times sine theta and the distance is what I'm referring to here. If I look at NL, who is on the pivot point, what is that distance? The answer is, the distance is zero. The force is on the pivot point, the distance is zero, so that entire torque is just gonna go away for the first half of the problem, which is great, because I didn't know it anyway. It was gonna be an unknown variable, so this is fantastic. So now I'm gonna focus on the other three forces. Let's start with little mg here, the 11 kilograms. So. I would say that this is a clockwise. As a matter of fact, I would say this one's clockwise. I would say this mg is also clockwise. And then this normal force on the right, that's counterclockwise. So I'm gonna add this one and this one on one side of my equation and set it equal to nr on the other side of the equation. So first for the mg with the 11 kilograms, it's gonna be its mass, which is 11, times g, which is 9.8, times the distance, which that distance we said was two meters. As far as the sine theta is concerned, this is gonna be one because it's sine of 90, it's perpendicular to my pivot point. And if you don't know what I mean by that, you can check out other videos on torque, but I'm not gonna dive any more into this in this video because this is a pretty complicated example already. I'm assuming you know the basics if you're watching this video. And then I'm gonna say plus the torque from the big mass, the 50 kilogram mass, and so that's gonna be mass 50 times G 9.8 times its distance, this distance from here 
to the pivot point, that distance is four. So that's gonna be times four. And then again, sine theta will be one. So the left side of the equation is complete. Now I just have to set it equal to the right side of the equation, which remember this is only from NR, the right normal force. So that force is NR, the distance is going to be the total eight meters, and then the sine theta is going to be one again because it's perfectly perpendicular. So now I get my calculator and I start to solve for NR. So for the left side of the equation, I'm gonna get 2,175.6, and then on the right side I have eight and R. And now if I wanna solve for NR, I just divide both sides by eight. And that's gonna give me a final answer of NR equals 272, and the units are Newtons. We're still talking about a force. NR is a force, not a torque. And that's because we just solved for the normal force. So it gets Newtons. Now if I wanna find NL, the left pivot point, I have two options. Let me erase some of this because it's kind of getting cluttered now. So if I want to find NL, I can do one of two things. The first thing I can do is I can move the pivot point to the other side, I can move it to NR, and then solve the problem again. But that's not the fastest way of solving it. The fastest way of solving this problem is I redraw the picture. I have my two bathroom scales here and here. I have my 11 kilogram mass, and I draw the free body diagram one more time. NL, NR, MG, and the other MG from the 50 kilogram mass, the bar, in the middle. And the way I can find normal force on the left side very quickly is I just use a relationship from earlier in this year where I say the forces going up must equal the forces going down. This is Newton's second law when you're not moving up or down. The forces going up must equal the forces going down. And this is almost gonna seem like easy mode because all I'm gonna write is NL plus NR, no torques, no distances, just the forces, equals the two mg's plus each other. Remember, they are different masses. One is the 11, the other is the 50. And yeah, it's this easy. Remember that I could not start with this equation because at first I didn't know what nr was, but as soon as I find nr, I can use this and it's really easy, this problem. So it's nl plus 272 equals, the first mg is 11 times 9.8, plus the second mg is 50 times 9.8. And then I just solve this using algebra and I will get a final answer of 326 newtons. And there is the left normal force. So one last thing I will note for this problem is the right normal force was 272. So it looks like the left one is higher. And that makes sense because if I look back at my original picture, the 11 kilogram mass is closer to the left side. So of course that normal force, that weight should be higher on the left side. So that makes sense to me. And that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.